Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. I'm going to be talking about um, one of my favorite problems from Chapter 7. That's using the Rydberg equation and talking about hydrogen atom transitions versus um, energies or wavelengths. Um, the interesting thing here is that I hardly ever ask this on an exam, but it is helpful in terms of your lab or if you are asked this on an exam. So here's the kind of problem that we're looking at. Determine the final value of N in an hydrogen atom transition if the electron starts, I don't know why there's a comma there, if the electron starts at N equals 4 and the atom emits a photon of light with wavelength equal to 486 nanometers. Now, looking at this, what's the right, when we want to relate anything to Ns, we're going to be using the Rydberg equation. The one I particularly like is the energy of a photon is equal to negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules times the inverse difference of the squares. How's that for fun? All right, so. Looking at this, we have the initial n, and then we have a wavelength. And this is an energy. There is a Rydberg equation that has the wavelength. It's an inverse wavelength equation. It has a different Rydberg constant. I'm not going to use that one because I like this one better. <laughs> this is the one I know. All right, so in terms of this Rydberg co constant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for energy of pho photon. I know that I can solve for the energy of a photon by using a modified version of Planck's equation, right? So here, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. The speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the wavelength here is 486 nanometers. And while you're happily canceling out things and you're saying, well, seconds cancel out, notice that meters and nanometers do not. And because they do not, I need one more conversion factor here. I know that there are 10 to the 9th nanometers in one meter. You guys see that? Excellent. And meters and meters cancel out, nanometers and nanometers cancel out. I get joules alone by itself in the end, which is exactly what I'd expect for the energy of a photon. And I get 6.626 EE negative 34th times 2.998 EE8 divided by 4, oh, whoopsie, I forgot my end moment, times 1 EE9 divided by 486. And I get a cool number like 4.0874, we're going to just take out a whole bunch of digits here, so it makes it a little cleaner for us, times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Okay, now I have the E of the photon, so now I need to solve this equation for the final N, right? I need the final N right there. Okay, so let's do that real quick. Let me maybe make a running moment over here of the energy of the photon. Energy of the photon from Planck's equation was equal to 4.0874 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. I'm going to erase all of this out because I can and I need the space. There it is, lo and behold, I have myself a clean cloth. The table gets a bit rattly when you're trying to erase quickly. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right. So here we go. There it is. Okay, so now I need to solve this equation for NF. Fantastic. I'm going to do that right now. Notice that the absolute signs, absolute value signs 
are important, but they're really to reiterate that you have to have a positive number here. So to get this expression by itself to begin with, right? I need to get rid of this. I would divide both sides by that to get rid of it. Okay, and then you would, um, what would you do next? You would add, you want this one alone, right? So you would add 1 over ni squared to both sides. Isn't that awesome? Why would I add it? Because that goes to 0, and I get 1 over nf squared is equal to delta E photon, right, divided by negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules plus 1 over Ni squared. All right, and notice that it says it emits a photon of light. If it emits a photon of light, then that means that this was um, one of those processes in the transitions where you went from an n of a higher number to an n of a lower number. When that happens, then the energy is released. We know in terms of sign conventions that when the energy is released, that means it gets a negative. All right, so I just added that in. Negative. 4.0874 times 10 to the negative 19th joules divided by negative 2.179 times 10 to the 18th, ooh, negative 18th joules. Notice the joules cancel out, plus 1 over, what is Ni? 4, 4 squared. Now, in terms of plugging this into your calculator, these two pieces should straight be straightforward. You're going to do four point negative four point zero eight seven four times ten e e negative nineteenth, but that one right there, that's a little harder. Okay, remember that when we take things to a negative power, one over four squared is the equivalent of one over sixteen. You could certainly plug that in, but it is also equal to four to the negative two power because negative numbers, oh, you guys can't even see that. Negative powers means that it's in the denominator. Four to the negative two power, now you guys can see it. So you could plug that into your calculator like that as well. All right, so in terms of doing this, one over nf squared, Woo! getting towards the bottom of the screen, living in Living in craziness right there. Negative 4.0874 EE negative 19th divided by a negative 2.179 EE negative 18. That gives me some number. Plus 4 to the power of negative 2. That gives me a cool number like 0 0.250. You guys, some of you might already be able to see that that means, because this is a quarter, right, of 1, then 1 over some variable squared equals a quarter, which means that nf has to be 2. But for those of you who can't see it, let's do a little moment here. Yeah. All right. Let me erase all of that. And then I'll rewrite it up here so that you guys can really see it with some awesomeness. I was watching a video the other day. Pablo Picasso did this as well. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Clearly an artist before his time. 
experimenting with several mediums. Okay. All right. What did we just say? We said 1 over nf squared equals 0 0.250. How am I going to get this into the numerator? Well, remember I could do the exact same thing here, right? We know that this is true. How do I get rid of the negative 2 then? Remember that this is the same kind of thing as dimensional analysis. If I had a negative 2 over here, what would I have to multiply that to get 1, right? because that's essentially the power that I want here. I want nf to the first power. All that you have to do here is multiply by its inverse. And you would need a negative here so that the negatives cancel out. Lo and behold, folks, I can do the same thing over here. Negative 2 times negative 1 half is 1. I take the opposite side to the power of negative 1 half. Go for the 0.25 to the power. Oopsie. I'm hitting the fraction button instead of the power <laughs> of negative one half, and lo and behold, two is the answer you get. All right. Until I see you again, I wish you well and good day.